Now, this is vitally important for anyone out there who finds it hard to get motivated and stay motivated. And this is something I've never covered on any social media post or on any podcast. It actually taps into the very neurochemical system that allows you to then feel motivated. What we discover is nothing short of amazing. It's a perfect system for desire and pursuit of anything. You'll be in an amazing position to overcome procrastination and essentially pursue any goals in an ongoing basis. Many people have heard of dopamine, and nowadays people are starting to appreciate that dopamine is intimately involved with motivation, drive, and pursuit. Dopamine is critical for overcoming procrastination, for ensuring ongoing motivation, and indeed for ensuring confidence. In fact, we are going to talk about the relationship between dopamine and motivation and confidence at the level of neurobiological circuitry. We are going to cover tools that will allow you to leverage your dopamine in order to have maximum motivation to overcome sticking points, which include things like procrastination, but also by understanding the neural circuits in the brain and body that release and use dopamine, you will be in a far better position to understand why you become amotivated why you procrastinate, how to ensure motivation on an ongoing basis, and even how to leverage effort and the desire to become motivated as a way to do just that, to become more motivated. So how can we overcome procrastination? Well, it turns out that there are findings from within the addiction literature that turn out to be very powerful towards leveraging our way out of procrastination. And it has to do with this. You already know, because I've told you probably a dozen times now, that the depth of the trough after a dopamine peak, you're just not feeling motivated. You're procrastinating and how steep it was, how quickly that peak occurred. It turns out that not only is the depth of the trough proportional to that, but the rate at which you get out of that trough is proportional to how steep that trough is. Let me explain this for you in as clear terms as I possibly can. Imagine you're in an amotivated state. You're just not feeling motivated. You're procrastinating. You may think, okay, the thing to do here is something. I'll clean the house. I'll take care of some bills. I'll do something. Or I'll just wait. Those approaches, as we talked about before, generally don't work or at least don't work quickly. Or they lead you right up to the deadline and that's the deadline that forces you to get something done. Or you just don't get it done and you don't succeed in your goal. That happens a lot as well. However, if you were to take that state of being unmotivated, of procrastinating, and actually do something that's harder than being in that amotivated state, in other words, doing something that's more effortful, even painful, you can rebound yourself out of that dopamine trough much more quickly. So what do I mean you wanna put yourself in a state that's worse than or harder than the state that you're in or do something quote unquote more painful? And here I want to be very clear. I'll say this three times, but I'm gonna say it for the first time now. When I say more painful, I do not mean doing any kind of tissue damaging or psychologically damaging behavior or anything of that sort that's going to render you injured or not well, even in the short term. That's not what I'm referring to. So for instance, I heard a beautiful lecture recently done by Dr. Anna Lemke at Stanford School of Medicine discussing dopamine and some of the things in her book and some newer findings as well. And somebody in the audience asked her the question, does meditation increase dopamine? Now, earlier we talked about how non-sleep deep rest and yoga nidra has been shown in the scientific literature to increase dopamine. But I also mentioned earlier that classic forms of meditation, whether eyes open or eyes closed, so-called open monitoring or closed monitoring meditation, sitting there or lying there and focusing, does not increase dopamine levels per se. However, for most people, especially people who find it hard to meditate or who don't do that practice very often, meditation is effortful. Getting into meditation and staying in meditation is effortful. So if you find yourself in a state of procrastination, oftentimes a brief five to 10 minute meditation where you absolutely do not allow yourself to do anything besides close your eyes, focus on your breath, and when your mind drifts, get back to your breath, is not only extremely difficult and extremely frustrating, unless you're a well-practiced meditator, but it's often difficult and frustrating, not just to do, but to get into that practice. And not just to get into that practice, but to maintain that practice for that mere five to 10 minutes, because it's just not a natural state for us to be in. We have to force ourselves. So it is effortful. In fact, it qualifies as a basically available almost anywhere, anytime type of effortful activity that if you dislike it, perhaps even as much as some people dislike deliberate cold exposure, 
Well then, perfect. You now have an additional tool in your kit that you can use anytime you are feeling amotivated and procrastinating. Now, there are numerous examples I could give, and hopefully there are numerous examples that you're thinking about. The key is to have a short list of about five different effortful, aka painful activities that you can employ anytime you're feeling amotivated or in a state of procrastination, keeping in mind that the goal is not what you accomplish inside of that activity. Although it is important that you actually engage in that activity. I actually have to make myself meditate in that five to 10 minute little bout of effortful or painful activity, but it's not about achieving an outcome. It's about forcing your body and mind into a deeper state of pain and discomfort. In other words, taking yourself from that trough that you're already in and steepening and deepening that trough, because in steepening and deepening that trough, we know that the return from that trough to normal and even elevated levels of baseline dopamine is going to be faster and more robust. And in doing that, you will quickly find yourself back into a motivated state because not only does it teach you that doing hard things is possible, that's sort of a more of a subjective cognitive learning, but it actually taps into the very neurochemical system that allows you to then feel motivated and capable to pursue the larger goal, which is the thing you're really concerned about after all. So as is often the case, perhaps always the case on this podcast, we covered a lot of material. We covered dopamine and what it is. We talked about the circuitry and the different kinds of circuitry, focusing mainly on this mesocortical pathway that is so vitally important to motivation for any goals. Talked about the relationship between peaks and troughs and baselines and the foundational tools that allow us to set and maintain a healthy baseline level of dopamine, as well as ways to protect that baseline level of dopamine. And we talked about how to get ourselves out of states of procrastination and a motivation by not just waiting out those troughs in dopamine, but actually making those troughs in dopamine steeper by engaging in things that are effortful and things that we really don't want to do in those moments. Provided that those things are safe, we can get out of those dopamine troughs more quickly and back to our dopamine baseline or even above baseline. And we talked about what I really view as the holy grail of motivation, which is to be able to learn to attach reward to the effort process itself and to do so by not just understanding, but also learning to subjectively recognize and somatically experience release of these different stressful chemicals within our body. 